Happy Sabbath, dear church members and friends. We welcome you to our divine service this morning. And we are happy to have Pastor P. Lamore to share God's message with us this morning. And the message is entitled, Hope During Crisis. But before we hear the message, we are happy to have Miss Florina to present us a special song, He Is Always There. And I hope all of us will be blessed by this song and especially by the message that will be presented to us this morning.
my dear friends and believers thank you so much for watching to our channel at this moment i wish you god's blessing as we study and as you listen to his word this morning at the same time i would like to thank florina for that beautiful member that she has presented to us this morning may god bless her as she continue to minister through songs to the various people friends today i want to share with you the topic and that is hope during crisis hope during crisis romans chapter 12 verse 12 rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation continuing steadfastly in prayer let us pray all precious and heavenly father thank you so much lord for keeping us safe and sound till today in the midst of distress and discouragement in the midst of famines plagues and sickness we are still here to worship you lord accept us as we are and bless us today as we listen and study your word give us hope and we may rejoice during an even crisis thank you once again for i pray this in just name amen my dear friends and believers life is difficult and life can be more difficult in the future you are struggling against illness poverty marriage problems job difficulties and even economic uncertainty family may have fall apart and sometimes future is very unsure and maybe right now you are facing a serious struggle we have heard and witnessed about the pandemic epidemic pestilences famines and plagues everywhere in the world the prophecy is fulfilling day by day and the coming of the lord is at hand as it was mentioned in matthew chapter 24 verse 7 there shall be famines pestilences and earthquakes in various places my friends today we hear and panic of sickness death and wonder and what does the future holds the Christian life is not a peaceful life but we have a continuous battle to fight in this world the evil one is at war with us today and in this battle there are all sorts of struggle you and I are struggling within sins pride lust Great boasting and various wanting lingers in our hearts and in our minds. These are all the spiritual battles we have to fight every day in our life. In such a time like this, we came across discouragement, distress, worries and anxiety, and even afraid about our future. Life is uncertain and we wonder if there is hope during this crisis. My dear friends and believers, today I want to ask you this question. What do you do when you are facing such obstacles, such problems in life, such struggle? How do you move on with life? as a Christian and as a followers of Christ where do you fix your hope during this crisis where can we find the answer my friends I tell you the answer lies in the Word of God Jehoshaphat was the fourth king of the separated kingdom of Judah from 850 to 875 BC he was a zealous follower of the commandments of God. 
in his third year. He sent out certain princes, priests, and Levites to go all the cities of Judah, teaching the people out of the book of the law, because he sought the Lord, riches and honors increase around him. And as he received the bad news about the people of Ammon and Moab are coming to fight against him. My friend, what was Jehoshaphat's reaction? When he knew about this problem, what did he do? I'm going to share with you from the Bible and that is found in the Second Chronicles chapter 20 verses 1 and onward here we saw that after some few men came and told Jehoshaphat that a great multitude is coming against you from Edom from beyond the sea and behold they are in Hazan Tama then he was so afraid and set his face to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah and Judah assembled to seek help from the Lord all the city of Judah they came together to seek the Lord my friends that is the first point when Jehoshaphat came to know about the war and about the enemies which are coming to fight against him he seek the Lord he is not seeking help from any physicians or from any armies or from any troops but he is seeking the Lord so that he will be able to conquer his enemies and point number two he acknowledged the power of God he stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new God and said O Lord God of our fathers are you not God in heaven you are over all the kingdoms of the nation in your hand there are power and might so that none is able to withstand against you did you not our God dive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham your friend that is the acknowledge of Jehoshaphat that God is the ruler of these worldly kingdoms God is the ruler of the nation God there is power in your hand and with your power you can drive out all my enemies and there is nothing that that can withstand with you further in verse 9 if disaster comes upon us the sword of judgment or pestilence or famines we will stand before this house and before you for your name is in this house and cried out to you in our affliction and you will hear and save us my friend what a trust Jehoshaphat has in God he trusts in the power of God if there is anything that happens to us we are waiting for your power we are waiting and we are crying and we are praying that you will save us O Lord Jeremiah 17 verse 7 blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord my friends unbelievers how many of you and I today trust in the Lord 
How many of you and I today seek and acknowledge His power? We are weak and we are frail, my friends. We are panic because of sickness, famines, and pestilences. But how many of us today trust in the Lord, our God? I believe that God will see the heart of those who seek Him. And the third point is that Jehoshaphat acknowledged his weaknesses. O oh, our God, will you not execute judgment on them? For we are powerless against this great multitude that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are fixed on you. Friends, how many of us today fix our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ? How many of us are fixing our eyes unto God as we are powerless as we can do that thing by ourselves but friends today the Lord is asking us to confess our sins so that he will forgive us because there is nothing that we can do by ourselves he is willing to save us he is willing to forgive us he is willing to give us power and energy in time of discouragement, in time of distress, in time of anxiety. He is there to willing to help you and me, my friend. And the point number four, that Jehoshaphat reacted to his trouble and to his enemies. He is standing and beholding him in unity. And I can say that the Judah are standing, beholding the Lord's promises in unity. Meanwhile, all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. My friends, what a unity! What a unity! They are willing to fight against their enemies, not with power and with might, but by the Spirit of the Lord, seeking the Lord's power to fight and to protect against the war. Psalms 121 verses 1 and 2. David says, I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Psalms 133 verse 1 Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. There is strength in unity. There is power in unity. My friend, how many of us today are praying together as family how many of us today are praying together as a church to fight against the battle of satan today we are facing so much problems so much headache satan is trying to catch hold of us all our children are our young people how many of us today are praying my friends do you pray and do I pray and do I seek the Lord's help are we willing to stand and behold his promises and that is the next point number five there is hope in the Lord's promises that's what Jehoshaphat has done you know from verse 14 onward. As the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jahasil, the son of Zechariah, the prophet. And in verse 15, he said, 
Listen, all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat. I have a good news for you. What I have received from the Lord. And the good news is, do not be afraid and do not dismay at this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but to God. And this battle belongs to God. What a good news. What a great news. My friend, today we have so much battle to fight. You have a family at home. And you have a problem at home. You have a problem in your offices. You have a problem at your work. You have a problem with the society. And you have a problem elsewhere. Are you willing to wait for the Lord's promises? Do you have a hope in the promises of the Lord? Do not be afraid. Because this battle does not belong to us. This battle belongs to God. And He further gave them the challenge. And that challenge is found in verse 16. Tomorrow go down against them. Behold, they will come up by the ascent of this. You will find them at the end of the valley, east of the wilderness of Jeruel. And the next point that Jehoshaphat applied is that he remained faithful. Verse 17, you will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm, hold your position, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. My friend, what a great good news for the people of Judah. You will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm, hold your position, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid, and do not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them and the Lord will be with you. Oh my friend, how many of you and I are willing to stand and be faithful in his promises? My friend, that is the promises that is found from the book of the Bible. And the next point is the point number seven. While they are waiting for the Lord's promises, while they are hoping something to happen, they are worshipping in verses 18 and 19. Then Jehoshaphat bound his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshipping him. And the Levites and the Kohathites and the Korahites stood up and praising the Lord. They are praising the Lord without any fear. They are praising the Lord with a loud voice. Are you willing to praise the Lord today with a loud voice? Are you willing to praise Him with your power and might? My friends, Point number eight, have faith and believe in the Lord. And they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tokau. And when they went out, Jehoshaphat stood in front of them and gave a challenging words. He said, hear me, O Judah and the people of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord, your God, and you will be established. Believe his prophets, and you will succeed. Friend, that is the faith that he have. That is the belief that he have. And when he had counseled them, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord and praise him in holy attires. And they went before 
the army and say give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever though their enemies are coming at hand but these people were still praying these people were singing it is amazing isn't it sometimes it is funny isn't it if people are coming to fight against you will you prepare weapons to fight will you try to fight all sort of spears guns and what else to fight against without enemies but these people they prepare themselves spiritually to fight against the Ammon and Moab what was the result my friend so early in the morning they went out to the wilderness of Tokau and as they are going out on their way do you know what happened and when they began to sing praises to the Lord great thing has happened and the Lord has set an ambushes against those men of Ammon and Mount Seir who had come to fight against Judah who were trying to invade Judah as they were going to fight but the Lord has fought for them the Lord has ambushed the people of Moab and Ammon with the people of Mount Seir let us read from the Bible verse 23 the men of Ammon and Moab rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them after they finished slaughtering the men from Seir they helped to destroy one another what a great battle the people of Ammon and Moab were fighting with the people of Seir and after they slaughtered and killed all the people of Seir they were fighting among themselves and they killed everyone among themselves when Judah came to the place and to the mount to overlook over the desert and the wilderness they looked towards the heart they looked towards the people of Ammon behold there were dead bodies lying on the crown none of them escaped they fight and they kill among themselves when Jehoshaphat and his people came up there they saw only dead body they were full of blood and dead bodies and after that there were good clothings there were precious things Jehoshaphat and the Judah take them home Jehoshaphat seek the power of God he do not seek the power of men and so God has given him rest he do not need to fight God has given him rest and that is what the Bible promises to all of us Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 come to me all who are heavy laden and I will give you rest God has given rest to Jehoshaphat because he obey him and because he trusts him my friend he walked in the way of Asa his father and did not turn aside from it doing what was right in the sight of the Lord my friend is a great challenge for you and for me today as we are facing so much trouble as we are receiving so much bad news about the sickness it is the same advice for you and for me today if you walk in the sight of the Lord you will find hope rest peace and healing 
and comfort in his arm. There shall be no more sorrow. There shall be no more sickness. Or there shall be no more COVID-19. There shall be no more poverty. There shall be no more problems. There shall be no more jobless people. There shall be no more financial collapse. My friends, today if you only trust and walk in the sight of the Lord, there shall be no more troubles. There shall be no more death. There shall be no more worries. There shall be no more heartaches. There shall be no more tears. There shall be no more pandemic. There shall be no more epidemics, pestilences, famines, and plagues. My friend, the prophecy is fulfilling day by day and the coming of the Lord is at hand. Because of who God is and what he has already done for you and for me, we can trust him. He will continue to uphold you. He loves you and continues to have a wonderful plan for you and for me in our life. Today, my friend, I would like to challenge to you. Would you trust in God? As Jehoshaphat has trust him. Will you acknowledge your weaknesses and seek the Lord? And will you ask his power and strength? Will you seek him? Will you have faith on him? Will you believe on him? Will you have hope in him? My friends, Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 For I know the thoughts that I think towards you says the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and hope What a promise is it? The Lord has in his thought towards you and for me that he has a bright future and a hope for you and for me My friend Today we face so much problems, so much sickness, so much death. Everywhere, people are dying because of the pandemic. People are crying. People are worried. My friend, can we find a hope that goes beyond the grave? It is a big question, isn't it? The book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 4 and 5 verses 4 and 5 and God will wipe away every tears from their eyes there shall be no more death nor sorrow nor crying there shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away behold I make all things new death sorrow crying pain forever and forever are gone my friend that is a hope and we are hoping that Jesus is coming soon and if you have prepared yourself we will have a hope even though if you and I die in this world but we will have a hope one day he will come and take us home my friend May God bless us today as we hope during crisis, hope in his promises. May he bless us as we seek him, as we acknowledge our weaknesses, as we trust in him, as we have faith in him, and as we look for his coming. May he endures his power within us. So that when he come, he will take us home with him forever. May God bless us. Amen.